Hi, I'm Alexa Morales and welcome to Oracle Developer News where we bring the Oracle Developer Newsletter to life. Today, my guest is Shai Schmelzer, who's the Director of Product Management for Oracle Visual Builder. And Shai, you're a 20 year Oracle veteran or something like that. And you've lovingly worked on this product for, for the last how many years? I think this product is about five or six years. It's hard to keep track right now. Yeah, but I've been in the Oracle ecosystem for over 30 years and um, a lot of it spending actually working as part of Oracle as well. Yeah. yeah. So we have several low code options. And one thing I will say, I've been working on this newsletter for the past four years and you are reliably every month, it seems like, have an updates. So in this month's newsletter, you, there was no exception. You had two announcements. You had an announcement about dynamic components, and then you had a crash course. And then true to form, I think you've got some more stuff coming for next week. So let's get into right. it. What was the first thing you announced there about dynamic components? So dynamic components is actually an interesting development that we got into Visual Builder uh, because it's actually being used internally inside Oracle. So one of the things we're doing inside Oracle with Visual Builder is we're building our next generation of Oracle SaaS apps with Visual Builder. So we have uh, hundreds of developers inside Oracle using Visual Builder to build new models. And the dynamic components were actually developed initially for their usage. So they have a lot of repeating patterns where they create pages, for example, with tables or forms and connect them to data sources. And they also wanted to allow customers to dynamically change uh, the order of fields, for example, in a form, hide or show fields, do things like that. And we built those dynamic components for our development teams. And then we figured out, hey, this is something that can be very useful for people outside of Oracle as well. So the customers now can get those components from our component exchange in Visual Builder and use those when they are building their own pages and applications. And it makes it very easy to dynamically control what you're showing and how you're showing things based on conditions that you define all in a declarative way. So keeping true to this low code approach, uh, you just define your rules um, with a very nice, easy declarative interface and your page would change dynamically. And so we just released those in the latest version of uh, Visual Builder. We actually did a full hour uh, part of our office um, hours for Visual Builder, which we run every month, uh, that gives a deep introduction into those. And our customers are now starting to use them as well as our internal development teams. Yeah, I so I watched both the uh, dynamic components uh, and the and the crash course. And um, you know what I'm struck with is how powerful the tools are. And even though they're low code, then there's all this. Uh, JavaScript and HTML and, and anything else that you might be using that you have access to, um, full access to. Right. Um, do you see people delving into both and using both? Yeah. So what we realized pretty early in the life cycle of the product is that we started with something that was purely declarative. Everything was done in a declarative visual way, but uh, there's always a limit to what you can do in that approach which you can take people a lot of the way over to a complete application, but every customer has their own unique capabilities they want to build in or unique functionality they want to add. And pretty soon they would run into this wall where the declarative things weren't enough for them. So we at some point change um, the way that we think about Visual Builder to allow people not just to do things completely declaratively, but also to expose the actual code that is created when you do things declaratively and allow people direct access to the code, which allows them to have much more flexibility in the applications that they create. Yeah. And that's one of the nice things that you get out of it. The other nice thing is that because you're now actually working with code artifacts at the end of the day, you're working with visual aspects. So you, you're visually designing the page, visually designing the business logic even, but at the end of the day, you do get code. And because you now have access to the code, you can start to use traditional so-called powerful development platforms like Git for version management and integrate Visual Builder with Git functionality and allow a team to work uh, much more collaboratively. 
uh, where multiple people can work on the same pages. Uh, they can each create branch and then they can merge the code. If there are conflicts, we give them a visual way to do conflict resolution. And this increased not just the capabilities of what you can get out of your application, but also the whole experience of working in a team environment. Yeah, it's, it's, it is really seamless. And um, I, what I'm struck with is even though, you know, low code does have that, you know, WYSIWYG, what does it look like? I can see it all. But then you realize that the choices that you're making about binding data and making dynamic co um, components and, and variables and all these different things um, and, and the data structures and everything, you, you know, these are actually pretty deep developer questions as well. That, that you have to get into. So, so you see both sides, um, the experience uh, and the stakeholders, but then also the, the coding. So you really don't have to sacrifice any of it. That's what it seems like to me. And then ultimately you get this really true mobile experience, which is incredibly yeah. powerful as well, right? Yeah, so one, one of the things that I guess put Visual Builder in a unique position inside Oracle is that beyond just building web applications that are responsive and can be displayed on a mobile phone, we can actually, with a click of a button, take your application and switch it to be a progressive web app, uh, or even uh, do a deployment as an iOS or uh, Android native uh, type of packaging. And this allows you to take your application and give customers the true mobile experience. So it's not just a the browser on the phone where they go to the browser and type a URL and then go to your website that then uh, respond in terms of the UI. With Visual Builder, you can actually create the engagement of having an icon for your application on the device. And then when you click on that, the applications open up without all the surrounding Chrome of a browser. Uh, you have interaction with device features, so you can leverage things like the camera or access files on the device or the location. And some of our customers even build in uh, things like offline capabilities where the application function even if you don't have network connection. So um, with Visual Builder, it's actually very easy to take your application and turn it into a mobile application. It's just a setting at the application level, literally just switching um, uh, one checkbox. And we do all the progressive web app packaging for you. And one of the things we're seeing in the market is uh, how pervasive basically a progressive web app becomes right now as the mean for organization to distribute their mobile application. Because up until now, for example, mobile applications, whenever there was an update, you needed to go to the app store, download the new version. And a lot of customers or clients weren't doing that. With progressive web apps, the application automatically updates on the device after you installed it initially. So the customer installs it. When you release a new version, it would automatically update on the device and the customer doesn't need to do anything beyond that. This allows you as a developer to introduce new features into your application and for your customers to immediately have exposure to them. So it's a great uh, advancement. And internally, again, inside Oracle, when we're building our next generation of mobile interfaces, we're focusing on this progressive web app architecture. Yeah, and it, it also, in it, you're, you're emphasizing that you integrate with some of our PaaS and SaaS offerings, mm -hmm. right? like Oracle Integration Cloud. Yeah. Uh, what, what other things does it integrate well with? So one of the things, again, Visual Builder, we see it as a UI development platform, mostly around what Oracle has in the backend. And one of the key things that we integrate with is the whole Oracle Cloud Apps, the SaaS offering. And inside Visual Builder, we actually expose all the business objects that uh, Oracle SaaS creates, things like the customers or your invoices or any other thing that is inside our CX, uh, ERP, HCM modules. Those are all exposed as objects that you can access and bring the data from them into your application and then either create your own custom UI on top of it or uh, mesh it up with data from other systems. Then another thing that we integrate with is the Oracle Integration Cloud, which allows you again to pick up information from a lot of places, not just Oracle system, but go out from anything from a Dropbox to SAP and gather information and expose it in a consistent way. And with VB, again, we have a service catalog that shows you all those integrations that you built. And with a simple drag and a drop, you can bring it into a page. Another example is the process cloud, which allows you to define multi-step processes involving both automatic steps and steps that 
require approval from people and things like that. All the design for those is done visually with a tool called Process Cloud. And then from Visual Builder, we have built-in integration that allows us to invoke processes, look at the tasks that someone has on their to-do list and promote them. Um, we kind of see Visual Builder as a way for us to unify the development experience for UI across all the offerings in our backend. So for example, you have an Oracle database and you have a bunch of tables in there. You can use the odds functionality to expose them as REST services and then build a mobile UI with Visual Builder on top of that. And so yeah. that's one thing we're doing. Um, on the SaaS thing, one thing that uh, would be worthwhile mentioning is next week Oracle has a big uh, developer live event that talks okay. about modern application development. One of the sessions we're doing there um, is around Visual Builder and using it to extend the Oracle Cloud apps. So a lot of our customers are now using our cloud applications. The cloud applications offer a lot of functionality out of the box, but in a lot of cases, people have additional things they want to do. And in this session, we'll talk about how we do it in a cloud native architecture and show you a demo of how easy it is, for example, to go over and build your own mobile interface on top of, let's say, data from HCM, our uh, human capital management um, aspect. Yeah, well, that's really exciting. Um, so we will stay tuned. And that was my last question for you was what was coming next week? So it's developer live coming next week. Do you know what day? Is it Tuesday? Um, it's on August 3rd and August 5th. We have it in two time zones. Oh, nice. um, we're going to stay out up late for covering some of those time zones and wake up early to cover the other ones. Uh, so it's going to be a fun uh, week uh, that week. Yeah, I always enjoy those. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Shai. And we will share some links on where you can subscribe to the developer newsletter, where you can check out Visual Builder, and of course, where you can go see the developer live. So thanks for joining me, Shai. Have a great, thanks, Alexa. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>